Okay, Assalamualaikum dan juga selamat pagi Tolong senyap ah. Sorry lah pagi-pagi Pagi-pagi ni pun tak tahu mic yang biasa kita pakai pun hilang ke mana Okay uh, Harap mic yang ini working well Okay Eh uh, Mungkin kita review balik uh, We review what we have done so far Okay We have covered chapter 1 Okay Basically kalau you tengok If you look at your course outcome Chapter 1 cover the first outcome Okay That means you should be able to describe The linear control system theory in time domain Okay, hari itu kita telah uh, sentuh bahawa in chapter 1 bahawa dalam kursus ini kita akan belajar basically the main thing is adding a feedback to a system Okay yang mana bila kita add feedback to a system Okay yang mana sistem yang biasanya adalah open loop akan menjadi closed loop Okay, the system will become a, a closed loop control system. Okay. The only thing in chapter one we talk also that uh, the system that we are dealing is only for single input and single output, and it is also we are constrained ourselves to linear system. Okay. Because we know that. The system that we are dealing have interconnection between each other, and it's depending on the time. Okay, that's why if we derive the equation, we will get a, a differential equation. Okay. Okay, in chapter two, basically we have looked into the uh, modeling of the physical system. Into mathematical equation, okay. Uh, we are expecting by covering chapter two that you should be able to model a physical system into mathematical equation and block diagram and program a system response simulation, okay. So itu yang kita telah buat dalam chapter dua. You can gauge yourself. Kita telah sentuh bagaimana sekiranya sistem itu tak linear kita boleh linearizekan, okay? And then kita telah sentuh sekiranya kita mempunyai sistem uh, mechanicals ataupun electricals ataupun mungkin uh, thermal dan juga uh, uh, mungkin fluids yang mana kita boleh derive the uh, mathematical equation. Berasas ke, kepada hukum-hukum tertentu Okay Dan daripada situ kita akan dapat The differential equation Okay Dan daripada differential equation ini Kita boleh We can work out the equation Kita gunakan penjelmaan Laplace transform Untuk transformkan dia ke dalam S domain Dan bila kita telah dapat the equation dalam S domain Okay We will able to Selesaikan the equation without Going through the differentiation Ataupun integration Okay Kita boleh selesaikan the equation itu Kita boleh susunkan balik the equation dalam bentuk The output equal to something Equal uh, Kalikan dengan the The input Okay Yang mana kita boleh dapat equation tersebut dengan melakukan algebra manipulation. Okay. Dan bila kita dah dapat the transfer function, basically the ratio between the output to the input. Okay. Sekiranya kita tahu what is the input that going in, okay, to the system, kita boleh plotkan the response. Okay, kita boleh plotkan the response from the equation And then from that response, kita boleh nampak the behavior of the 
uh, sistem okay. Dan kita sentuh juga berkaitan dengan Scilab Kita gunakan Scilab Scilab basically You boleh work bila start daripada block diagram okay. Before that, sebelum you dapatkan the transfer function Sebelum you transfer ke dalam S domain You tak boleh buat apa-apa, you still gunakan mathematics Tapi afterward Bila you dapat block diagram, you can Gunakan block diagram reduction Even in the Scilab, you can Do the block diagram reduction And then at the end, you boleh dapatkan The plot for the respond Okay And Cuma dekat uh, In the Scilab, kita discuss further Yang covering chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 on the analysis and also covering the chapter 7 and also chapter 10 okay, on the design okay. tapi yang tu kita uh, kita akan sentuh selepas ini okay. jadi hopefully, hopefully by this time you should check yourself that this two outcome is already with you okay. kalau you rasa this two outcome tak sampai lagi Okay, you need to uh, review balik Okay, revise balik chapter 1 dan chapter 2 Okay, okay you should be able to uh, gauge yourself that By this time you should, uh, these two outcome You already obtain Okay, you already achieve Okay, the next we going to The Second, uh, the third outcome, which is analyze, analyze, uh, analyze the feedback control system characteristic in chapter 4. And then after, after that, chapter 5, we're going to measure the performance and determine the stability of the feedback control system. Basically, this phase is the phase of analysis, where by doing this phase, basically, you should be able to analyze a control system. Okay? Okay, we uh, the chapter four. The title is feedback control system characteristics. Okay, in this lecture, basically, I will compare the feedback control system to open loop control system. Okay, last time in chapter one, we have already uh, developed the uh, what is the open loop control system, and then we have at the uh, feedback to the system which become closed loop okay but now in chapter 4 basically we will compare between these two loop system which is open loop and also closed loop okay what are the benefit of applying feedback okay in the closed loop control system okay i will also explain the effect of varying parameter to sensitivity of control system okay this is actually one of the advantage of the uh, uh, feedback control system so this is basically the section that you will learn introduction and also error signal analysis okay sensitivity control system to parameter variation okay section 4.1 4.2 and 4.3 okay you can refer to the books uh, in the uh, related page Okay, I hope the knowledge that you have learned From chapter 1, chapter 2 Will help you understanding On this chapter Okay Okay, let's Look at Again at the open loop And also closed loop control system Okay, last time when we talk about The closed loop control system Okay, we talk about the additional of feedback uh, element in the control system. Okay, and then we uh, in chapter one also we define the control system. We say that a control system is an interconnection of component forming a system configuration 
that will provide a desired system response. Okay. So this is just, uh, I think, the definition that we took from chapter one. Okay, because the desired system response is known. Okay. Because normally the response is the response that we wanted. That's why we we know it. A signal proportional to the error between the desire and the actual response is generated. Okay, because the desire response is known normally. That's why we can do a comparison between the actual response. Okay, when the system is responding, and then when we do that comparison, basically. We will generate the error. Okay. Okay. The utilization of this signal to control the process results in closed loop system. Okay. The feedback that we use, the feedback signal, which later on will generate error. Okay. Uh, We result in a closed loop sequence of the operation as shown like this. Okay, because we have the process to be controlled. Okay, which producing the response or the output, and if we measure the output, okay, we can utilize the signal, this feedback signal, in comparison with the desired response. Okay, and then once we do that comparison. We will produce an error here, and the error we can use for the controller, okay, to give the correct command to the process so that it will improve the response. Okay, so this is basically what we call it a, a closed loop sequence. Okay, so that is in the closed loop system. So to illustrate the characteristic and advantage of introducing feedback, a simple signal, a single loop feedback system is considered. Of course, in chapter one we talk that uh, the control system can have multiple input, multiple output, okay, and it can have a multi loop as well. Okay, the only thing or multi variables. Okay, the only thing to simplify our under uh, to make us easier to understand, we need to look at the simple system first. Okay, we just look at a single loop feedback system. Okay, where it has only one uh, output that we are controlling. Okay. Okay, if we look again. The open loop system. For open loop control system, we have this block diagram where the G is the transfer function of the process, and the output is Y S. Okay. And normally the input is Y R S. Okay. The only thing maybe. Okay. There will be maybe some other input or cell that coming in, which is called as disturbance, okay, which disturbing the system, okay, which also later on will contribute to the to the response, okay. The only thing if we talk about the open loop control system, open loop control system operate without feedback, and directly generate the output and respond to an input signal. So basically, if we give input here. Directly will give the output. So basically, the output is basically equal to G S multiplied by R S plus T D. Okay. For closed loop control system. Okay, closed loop control system. If you notice. That the block of the process is the same. Okay, the output is the same. Y S. Okay, the only thing 
Okay, here is actually the RS before the input. Okay, the only thing in in closed loop system, the input we move it back because we will add uh, the comparator later on. Okay, and the TD the disturbance is still remain the same just before the the process. Okay, so whenever we do the closed loop control system, the main thing is to add a feedback here, HS. Okay, we add a feedback here, and then when we add a feedback, we need to compare okay, the feedback signal with the desired response. The desired response is the input, and then we produce an error there. Okay, and then the error we use we use okay for the controller this is the controller block okay to improve the system response okay the only thing when we work on the uh, feedback control system when we add the when we measure the uh, the output okay sometime the sensor uh, will face problem in the noise okay sometimes there is a some input because of the noise here that's why we consider the noise here okay but basically the difference between the open loop and closed loop is just the additional of the feedback system here okay so the closed loop control system uses a measurement of the output signal and a comparison with the desired output to generate an error signal that is used by controller to adjust the actuator. Okay. Okay, the only thing when we look at the closed loop control system, okay, these are few advantages that when uh, we can list them. Okay, compare in comparison with the open loop. Okay, later on after this we will prove. Okay, why we say that closed loop system, the control system having disadvantages. Okay, despite the cost and increased system complexity, of course, when we add a closed loop control system, although we just add the feedback, but the system become very complex if we compare to the open loop control system okay basically because of that complexity basically the cost also is more than the uh, open loop control system anyway okay there are few advantages that the closed loop control system having that we need to consider uh, of using it later on okay the first advantage of the closed loop control system closed loop control system decrease sensitivity of the system to variation in the parameter of the process okay Okay, here basically we talk about sensitivity. Okay, because basically in the control system we are concerned about the response, how to control the response so that the response is our desired response. Okay, and when we talk about sensitivity, the more sensitive the system is, the more the response will change okay that means in this case we are we wanted the system have less sensitivity because if it is less sensitive the response will not change much okay because we want if possible the response can become constant later on okay that's why we are uh, wanted that the system to have 
less sensitivity. Okay? And later on, we can prove that with the closed loop feedback control system, we okay, we can decrease the sensitivity. Okay? And then afterward, the second one, okay, you see just now that we have a disturbance going in as well. Okay? And we, when we talk about the response, we doesn't want also that this, this, this uh, disturbance will affect the response. Okay? That's why if we have a system that can reject this disturbance, although the disturbance is going in, but the response doesn't change, okay, that will be a better system. Okay? So later on also we will prove that with this closed loop feedback control system, okay, it will improve the rejection of the disturbance. Okay? And then the third advantage, the third, the third, hello, the third, sorry lah, yang ini sebab mikrofon saya ambil daripada dalam tu, yang mungkin tak berfungsi bagus. Okay. The third one is uh, improve measurement noise attenuation. Okay. Of course, bila kita tambahkan the feedback, okay, kita mungkin perlu facing of the noise. Okay. Dan sebab the noise pun dikirakan sebagai another input. So, surely it will contribute also to the response. Okay. Tapi, Nanti kita akan tunjuk walaupun there are additional input as noise when we add the feedback, okay? But uh, with the closed loop, okay, the system still be able to improve the measurement, okay? Although there are noise, okay? Kita juga akan prove yang ini nanti. And then the fourth advantage improve reduction of steady state error of the system okay of course when we uh, do the control system we wanted our final value okay the response to be same as the desired value okay so that mean there should be no error, if possible, steady state error. Okay? And later on also we can show that with the closed loop system, the closed loop system also will be able to reduce the steady state error as small as possible. Okay? So that is the fourth advantage. And then the last one, Easy control and adjustment of transient response of the system. Okay, although we know uh, we said before that when we have a transient response, it will appear for a short while. After that, it will be dis disappear. Okay. However, sometimes it is important also to consider. Okay, because if possible, if this transient response can occur in short while. Okay, short as possible, it is much better. So you, we can get our response as a steady state much faster. Okay, and we will see also that if we have the uh, feedback system later on, okay, where uh, we can easily control and adjust the transient response of the system. Okay. So this is all the advantage that we will prove in this chapter 4. Okay? Okay, let's look again to this block diagram for the closed loop system. Okay? 
Okay, we have the process. Okay, which producing output here. Okay, and then and we we have a feedback here, and then we compare, and then we have a controller here. This is the input, and this may be the uh, the disturbance. Okay, going in, and there will be some noise here. Okay, so basically this is the closed loop system. Okay, so if you look at this block diagram, basically the closed loop feedback control system normally has three input, which is the RS. The RS normally is the command that we inserted. Okay. The TDS, TDS normally is disturbance. Okay, that we normally doesn't want. Okay, but it come into the system. Okay, and then the noise. Okay, the noise normally sometimes because it come with the with the sensor sometimes. Okay, so it also come as an input here. So there are. Three basic input here, and then we have one output that we are controlling, the YS, the response that we are uh, considering. Okay. Uh, one term that you need to know is tracking error. Okay, tracking error is basically the difference between the desired response to the actual response. That's why we write it as RS minus YS. That is the error. Consider as an error. So, normally if we have a system, we wanted the error to be zero if possible okay but if we could not get a zero but at least as minimum as possible okay the only thing don't misunderstood es with the eas eas is basically the this is the error after the comparator, this uh, A is stand for actual. Okay, when we do measurement, and then when we compare, we got the EAS. Okay, because the ES is depend on the HS. Sometimes it is equal to EAS, but if HS is not equal to one, basically it will not the same. Okay. Let's say for ease of discussion, we let first the HS, the feedback, become a unity feedback, which is HS equal to 1. Okay? So if HS equal to 1, okay, from this block diagram, okay, we can get the, the response equation. Right? Because the output here, Ys, since we have three input, okay, one of them is Rs here. The second one is TDS, the disturbance, and the third one is the noise. Okay? That's why there will be three contribution of the uh, input here to the output. Okay? So this is basically the contribution of the input RS. This is the contribution of the disturbance. This is the contribution uh, due to the noise. Okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, how you get this equation? Can you tell me how we get this equation? We 
we can reduce the block diagram. Okay, for example, if you want to get this one, okay, if you want to get this one, you make the TD and NS equal to zero first. Right. If you make this equal to zero, make this one equal to zero. Okay. And then what you can do, you can see you have only YS here and RS here as input. Okay. And then because this is zero, so basically there is no comparator anymore. Okay. So GC and G, we can uh, become in series. Right. So it become in series, we can multiply them. Right. Okay. And this one also become zero. Okay. The only thing we have a HS here. Okay. So if we have a simple loop like that, where this is GC multiplied by G, and here is H, so we can get the block GC multiplied by G, divided by 1, because it's negative here, so we got plus, okay, and then GC multiplied by GH, uh, 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 GC multiplied by G, and then multiply by H here. The only thing, since we say that H is equal to 1, that's why uh, the H is disappear here. Okay? So we have this equation. Okay? You can get that? You can follow how to get this equation? Okay. Similarly also, for this one, if you want to get this one, RS and NS, you need to let them to become zero. Okay? You make this become zero, you make this become zero. So what happened? HS and GC will become in series. Right? So now, the equation here become G divided by 1 Saya sorry ya, the thunder ni sepatutnya minus ni because of this minus. Eh plus, oh betul lah plus, sorry sorry. This is minus, so it become plus, okay? Sebab minus ni bila kita kalikan nanti, bila walaupun ini dah tak ada, kita ubahlah ke sini, okay? This minus, okay? Jadi kita ada. GC multiply by H sebagai di sini. Jadi kita ada GC uh, G di atas. Kan? Kita ada GC uh, kita ada G multiply by GC multiply by H. Cuma H sama dengan 1. Jadi kita dapat macam ni. This equation. Okey. Untuk equation ini sama juga kita kena buat TD sama dengan kosong, RS sama dengan kosong. Okay, and then basically, you what you will see is that HS, GC, S, and G, S, they are all in series. Okay, they are all in series. Okay, cuma don't forget about the negative here. Okay. Okay, and then uh, okay, jadi yang atas ni semua di atas ni jadi Negative GC multiply by G multiply by H atas ni semua, okay? Cuma H adalah sama dengan satu, okay? Jadi kita replace H sama dengan satu dan di bawah ni jadi 
1 plus yang atas ni tadi GC G multiply by H kalikan dengan dia punya HS ni adalah sama dengan 1 dekat sini. Okey. Jadi kita akan dapat the equation seperti ini. Okey. Jadi saya harap masing-masing balik kalau boleh cuba macam mana boleh dapatkan this ketiga-tiga equation ni. Kalau siapa tak dapat, tak faham, okey boleh tanya saya. Okey. Once kita ada the response equation Okay, this is the response equation. Okay, tadi kita ada the tracking error is equal to RS minus YS. Okay, jadi sekarang ni, apa kita, kita dah ada YS, kita substitute the YS in this equation. Okay, dan after we substituting, we will get the ES will become this equation. Okay. Maksudnya kita ada RS ni, kita tolakkan dengan ini. Okay. Dan kita tolak dengan ini, sebab tu kita dapat negatif ni. Dan kita tolak ni, kita dapat positif ini. Okay. Okay, ini sebab kita ada kita ada RS tolak yang ini. Okey, itu kita dapat ini. Okey. Okey. Di sini. Here. Here there will be a few definition. A definition. Uh, one of them is looping game. Looping gain is considered as the controller gain multiplied by the process gain, the transfer function. Okay, this transfer function multiplied by this transfer function. Okay, this is called as looping gain. And then we can label it with L. Okay, and then if we change this with L and substitute to this equation, we will get the error will become... 1 divided by 1 over L S multiply by R S minus G divided by 1 over 1 plus L S multiply by T D S plus L S divided by 1 plus L S multiply by N S. Okay. And then another thing, we can write the equation uh, LS plus 1 to become FS. Okay? And then if we write 1 over FS like this, this term will known as sensitivity function. Okay? We label it with S as a function of S. The sensitivity. Okay? So basically, if we replace this with the FS, basically we will got the sensitivity is equal to 1 over 1 plus the loop gain. Okay. And then another terminology, there are uh, something we call it complementary of sensitivity function which is labeled as CS. Okay? Why we call it as a complementary? Because if we add with the sensitivity function, okay, it should equal to 1. Okay? That's why we call it as complementary sensitivity function. Okay? Or if we replace uh, the S here with uh, this equation, okay, basically we will have the complementary Sensitivity function is equal to 1 minus S, which is equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 plus LS, or it is equal to LS divided by 1 plus LS. 
Okay. So, when you look at this equation back, the error, you can replace with the with the either sensitivity function or complementary sensitivity function. Okay. So, the error, if we substitute that equation, basically will become sensitivity function multiplied by input Rs minus sensitivity function multiplied by G as a function of S and then the disturbance TD as a function of S plus the complementary function, sensitivity function multiplied by the noise. Okay? So, the equation will become simple like this. Okay? The only thing, if you analyze this equation, okay, let's say if we want to reduce the error, because when we talk about the error, normally we want the error to be zero. But if not zero, if possible, it is small as possible. Okay? So, to have that, basically what we can do, okay? To make the error become small, the sensitivity function should be small. The complementary sensitivity function also should be small. If both of these are small, basically we will get the error become smaller. Okay? But is it possible for us to do that? Because the sensitivity and the complementary if a sensitivity function is basically they are contradicting. Okay? Because if we increase if we reduce one of them, the other one will increase. If we increase the other one, the former one will 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 increase. Okay? So that's why however the sensitivity function reduce and the complementary uh, sensitivity function is reduced is impossible since we have this equation. Okay? And basically, in this case, normally what we need to do, we need to compromise. We need to find the optimum um, results. Okay? How much the sensitive function need to be increased and how much the uh, complementary sensitivity function need to be uh, decreased as well. Okay? Okay, next we look at the control system parameter variation. This is still also talking about the sensitivity. Okay, a control system process will be affected when the process transfer function GS is subjected to changing environment, aging, ignorance of the exact value of the process parameter, other natural factor. Okay? What does mean? When we have the transfer function for the process, you know the process, when we look at the transfer function, okay, beside the input and the output that we, the value is vary, if you look at the transfer function, the other value is constant value, right? Normally, in the transfer function, you have a, a, a lot of constant parameter there. Okay? And this parameter, we are normally assuming that it is constant. But are these parameter remain exactly constant as we as assuming? Okay? Because normally when the environment is changing, normally this constant little bit, maybe slightly change. Okay? And if this 
process also maybe have uh, become old, maybe after some time, very long, maybe some of the parameters that we uh, assume to be constant already change. Okay? And not only that, some of the parameter when we assuming it is concerned with a certain value, maybe the value is not exactly the one that we estimating. Okay? It may be changed as uh, different as well. Okay? And there are so many factors that make this parameter change. Okay? So when this parameter in the transfer function that should be constant, but they are changing, if they really change, do they will affect the response? Okay, of course they will affect the response. Okay, that's why we need to look at the sensitivity, how the changes in this parameter will affect the response. Okay. However, with a closed loop control system, uh, a closed loop control system sends the change in the output due to the process changes and attempt to correct the output. The goodness when we have a, a closed loop control system because we have the feedback that measure the output. So if they are changed because of this change in the parameter, okay, the system also aware. Okay, and because of the awareness, the closed loop control system also will try to react because of the changes. Okay, so that is the goodness if we have a, a closed loop control system. So a primary advantage of a closed loop control system is its ability to reduce the sensitivity to parameter variation. Okay. We wanted to prove that with the closed loop control system, it has the ability okay, to reduce the sensitivity to the parameter variation. When the parameter change, okay, although uh, we will show that uh, it won't affect so much to the response. Okay. So for closed loop system, let's look. Okay. Again, we back to the response system, where the output is equal to, okay, the output from all the three component here. Okay. The only thing let right now we just consider about the the contribution of the uh, input here. Okay, we consider the the disturbance is zero and also the the noise is zero. Okay, so basically we have the output with this equation. Okay, the response of the system is equal to G C multiplied by G divided by one plus G C multiplied by G multiplied by the input R S. Okay. And from this equation, if the GC multiplied by G is considered very, very big compared to 1, okay, what happened? Okay, if this one is compared very, very big to, uh, compared to 1, what happened? Okay, 1 plus G multiply, uh, GC multiplied by G basically can be almost the same as GC multiplied by G only. Okay, because the one here will become negligible, right? Okay, so if that's the case, basically this GC multiplied by G at the top and GC multiplied by G at the bottom here can cancel out. So basically, we can write that YS 
can be equivalent to the input RS. Okay. However, this condition may cause the system response to be highly oscillatory or even unstable. Okay. Kita boleh buat the system supaya yang ini become very very big compared to one. But the condition kalau kita buat ini, the system akan menjadi terlampau. The oscillation will be e, e, lebih frequent and the system kadang-kadang menjadi tak stabil. Okay. Boleh tu boleh tapi at the end kalau dia jadi tak stabil memang jadi tak guna jugalah. Okay. Okay. Jadi sebab tu it is impossible sebenarnya untuk kita nak buat yang ini much bigger than this. Okay. Okay. So if we cannot this one, uh, we cannot make this function to be a very very big compared to one. Okay. Basically, we need to view. Okay. Because with this equation, if we consider the error, the error as we said before, the tracking error is equal to rs minus ys okay and then kalau kita replace equation ys here in here basically kita akan dapati es sama dengan 1 divided by 1 plus gc multiply by g and then multiply all of this is multiply with rs okay or we can write in the uh, loop gain equation as 1 divided by 1 plus LS multiplied by RS. Okay. Cuma let's look sekiranya there is a parameter variation effects. Okay. If in our process transfer function GS there is parameter variation effects basically the the transfer function of the process akan jadi GS plus delta GS. This is because of the variation. Okay. Dan kalau katakan yang GS in, uh, yang ini, rangkap ni, kita ganti dengan rangkap ini. Okay. Kita boleh tulis equation error ni tadi dalam bentuk ini. <coughs> Okay, maksudnya kalau kita consider the process adalah changing. Okay, the process is changing. Okay. At the end, kita akan dapat the error juga is changing. Okay. Kita akan dapati the error is changing. Okay. Cuma bila kita ada equation ini, ES ni tadi, Kalau kita gantikan equation ES ni ke sini dan kita dapatkan the equation of delta ES. Nampak ini kita ganti dengan ini kita ganti ES kat sini and then kita bawa ke sebelah sini dan kita rewrite balik. Kita akan dapat equation of delta ES adalah sama dengan this equation. Okay. Ini sebab kita dah gantikan ES dengan this, kita substitute with this equation. Okay. Kita akan dapat this equation. Okay. And so this is the equation of the change of error because of the parameter variation tadi. Okay. In the process. And kalau kita analyze this equation, if this equation, uh, this G, uh, GC multiply by G, kalau kita kata dia adalah lebih besar compared to G multiply by delta G, okay, kita boleh ringkaskan yang ini, sebab yang ini kita boleh ignore. 
Bila kita ignore yang ini Apa akan jadi If this is negligible And then kita nampak Yang ini dengan ini adalah sama Sebab tu dia akan jadi square Okay Jadi the equation akan jadi lebih ringkas Seperti ini And then kita boleh replace Dengan Yang ini tadi dengan loop gain LS Okay Jadi kalau kita dapat equation of ini Kalau kita bandingkan dengan the error tadi Kan Apa kita nampak beza dia Di sini is only Divided by 1 plus L Di sini is divided by 1 plus L square Okay Maksudnya di situ The change in the tracking error is reduced by a factor of 1 plus L Betul tak? Okay Okay lah Sebab ada some of your kawan Kata time dah cukup uh, Dah apa lebih uh, Kita berhenti di sini Saya akan ulang balik daripada atas ini Okay Besok Okay kita jumpa lagi